I would like to call the Monday, October 7, 2019 Oakwood City Council meeting to order. Would you please rise and join me with the pledge to the flag? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. May I have a roll call, please, Lori? Mayor Duncan. Here. Vice Mayor Byington. Here. Mrs. Hilton. Here. Mr. Epley. Here. And may I have a motion to excuse uh, Council Member Stevens from tonight's meeting? So moved. Is there a second? Second. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Thank you. So ordered. And may we have a report of the minutes of our uh, regular session and work session on September 16, 2019. Mrs. Hilton. Uh, yes, Your Honor. I have reviewed the m minutes from those meetings. I found them to be correct and complete, and therefore I move that they be adopted as written. Do I have a second? Second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Thank you. So ordered. Uh, under status reports, I have a status report I'd like to uh, read into the record. In, on, in 2015, Attorney Ellis Jacobs with Advocates for Basic Legal Equality Incorporated, ABLE, contacted the City of Oakwood to request traffic enforcement data. A similar series of requests was made in 2016 and 2017, and Mr. Jacobs was provided data for all years 2015 through 2017. In September 2019, Mr. Jacobs contacted the City of Oakwood again requesting a meeting to review a report that he prepared with the assistance of Dr. Martha Hurley, PhD, University of Dayton professor and director of criminal justice studies. I believe Dr. Hurley is here in the audience. Welcome. On October 1, 2019, Oakwood City Law Director Rob Jacks and Director of Public Safety Alan Hill met with Mr. Jacobs and Dr. Hurley. The day before the meeting, the city was provided with a five-page summary report stating that the authors recognize that there are, were limits on the analysis and data, but think that the findings point to a problem on how traffic stops are conducted in Oakwood. The report solely focuses on data from calendar year 2016. We take all matters seriously related to the delivery of our public safety services and have already completed an initial review of the report. Through, through, the re this, through this review, we identified several areas that merit further discussion. They include, there is no underlying data or information provided with the report showing how percentages were calculated for use in the analysis. The report acknowledges that there is no evidence to corroborate the figures used in the pie chart showing the race of people ticketed after random license plate check. It asserts that the tickets were likely to have resulted from an officer running the license plate without observing the violation. The Oakwood Public Safety Department does not track stops based on whether they were initiated by observed traffic violations or random license plate checks. Stops were differentiated by ABLE based on an assumption that a standalone licensing effect likely resulted from a license plate check. This assumption may be true in some instances, but not all. The data is incomplete, which is acknowledged in the report. We did not have all the data that we would have needed to fully explore the causes and consequences of the racial divide in police stops in Oakwood. As stated in the report, the authors were not able to examine or consider a number of variables including unrecorded stops, time of day factors, individual officer practices, location of stops, and differential enforcement. The use of Kettering as a benchmark for comparison is not explained other than Far Hills Avenue and Schroyer Road continue into Kettering. During the October 1, 2019 meeting with the authors, they acknowledged that they did not consider differences in how the two departments conduct traffic enforcement, differences in traffic patterns on each jurisdiction's portion of these streets, and differences in how the two departments track traffic enforcement data. 
There is no benchmark for what is or is not an appropriate percentage of stops based on random license plate checks, nor is there any benchmark for the number of persons of a particular race that may have outstanding warrants, driver's license suspensions, or other licensing issues that are revealed through random license plate checks. There was no effort to count vehicles or otherwise account for the demographics of the driver on Oakwood's main thoroughfares. The authors acknowledge that these demographics may differ from the demographics of Oakwood residents. This is absolutely the case given that Far Hills Avenue, State Route 48, and Schroyer Road are primary thoroughfares connecting the city to Dayton, from Dayton to the southern Montgomery County suburbs. The authors also agreed that there is no feasible method to capture this data. The report recommends adoption of anti-bias policies, but the authors did not inquire as to existing policies. We have a policy and it is periodically updated to reflect law enforcement best practices. The report also recommends implementation of training for Oakwood Public Safety Department officers, but again the officers did not inquire as to existing policies or training records. Since 2002, the following training, I'm sorry, since 2012, I misspoke, the following training has been completed by Oakwood Public Safety Officers and Command Staff, the vast majority taught by instructors who are recognized at the state and national level as experts in the area. March 2012, Cultural Diversity, Implicit Bias, a two-hour course. November 2013, Cultural Diversity, Maintaining Cultural Awareness in the Workplace, Identifying Unintended Bias and How It Manifests, one hour. July 2015, Impact, Improving Modern Policing and Community Trust, Building a Culture, Implicit Bias, Critical Thinking, eight hours. In 2016, Policing in the 21st Century, Perceptions, Prejudices, and Bias, Associations and Proof of Implicit Bias, Overcoming Implicit Bias through Training, Countering Implicit Biases on Your Own, eight-hour course. March 2018, Awareness of Cultural Diversity, Understanding the Positive, Personal, Professional, and Community Benefits that results from awareness of cultural diversity, one hour. March 2019, cultural competency, racial profiling, implicit bias, part one, included community diversity, community perceptions, citizen police interaction, diversity, stereotypes, bias, implicit bias, and, confirm and conformational behavior. April 2019, Cultural Competency, Racial Profiling, Implicit Bias, Part Two, Racial Profiling, Community Policing and Gangs, Reporting, Monitoring and Response Strategies, Homeless and Mentally Ill, 2.5 hours. In our annual report to the community, we stated, patrol visibility and traffic enforcement play a key role in reducing crime vehicle accidents, OVI, and traffic offenses that often directly or indirectly contribute to vehicle accidents. Studies have shown that active visible patrol is an effective deterrent to many of these problems. Our overall goal is simple. Keep our community safe for residents, pedestrians, cyclists, and motorists, and maintain a reputation that Oakwood is a community where traffic laws are enforced. Traffic enforcement will remain a cornerstone of the Safety Department's policing philosophy. Daily goals and objectives of the Safety Department for uniform patrol and traffic enforcement include actively conduct traffic enforcement on a daily basis, strictly enforce Oakwood parking regulations, be highly visible to the public, reduce the number of traffic crashes caused by moving violations, Focus on school zone enforcement during months when schools are in session. Conduct proactive radar enforcement at selected locations. Monitor intersections where accidents and signal violations frequently occur. And promptly address citizen complaints and concerns regarding traffic laws and violations. <clears throat> this issue is very personal to me. In 2001, as a private citizen, 
I read the original articles in the Dayton Daily News as described by Mr. Jacobs and Dr. Hurley in their report. I was very impressed by the way our former city manager, Michael Kelly, dealt with this issue. He addressed the manner in a very professional manner with total transparency. Because of his example, Michael Kelly is the reason I decided to commit to public service. A primary outcome of the 2001 event was that Oakwood began collecting and reporting detailed data on policing activity, particularly focused on race. For the past 17 years, as a member of the City Council, I have read the monthly reports from the Public Safety Department to the City Manager. The reports list the law enforcement, fire, EMS training, and officer activity in categories including traffic violations cited, warnings, field investigations, and arrest. This data is sorted by race and ethnicity. I see nothing in these reports to suggest any explicit or implicit bias against any race or ethnicity. As City Manager Norbert Klops reported to the Dayton Daily News, in my nearly 18 years as City Manager, I struggle to recall a single incident, instance where a person of any race contacted me to express concern about any matter related to a traffic stop or other traffic enforcement incident. Nor have I. Nonetheless, City Council has an obligation, along with City staff, to analyze the findings of this report. I commit to be as transparent as we were 18 years ago in addressing this matter. To that end, we seek the cooperation of the authors of the report to review their data and methodologies in order to prepare a complete and proper assessment. This will enable us to determine if any changes to our policies and procedures are warranted. As with all public services we provide, we continuously look for opportunities to improve. While we are already conducting regular training on implicit bias and related topics, we are open to considering additional training as may be warranted. We are also open to discussions about the use of random license plate checks to determine how our policies and procedures compare to law enforcement's best practices. Thank you for that update. And at this point, we will have a visitor section to our report. I know there are several people here tonight that wish to address council on this matter. Our procedure would be if you would come to the podium here and state your name and address for the record. That way the people that are watching at home can hear what you're saying. Uh, I would like you, we normally have a three minute rule. I will use discretion on, on that uh, as, as I deem fit. And to the extent that people have similar comments, I would ask that we not you know, redo all of the rest of the comments. But we're used to having long meetings here, and so we welcome you. I believe uh, uh, Mr. Forward is here. Derek, is that, would you like to come and address council first? I, you know, he had called us earlier, and I wanted to give him a special, special presentation. Welcome, Derek. Thank, thank you, Mayor uh, Duncan uh, <coughs> and City Manager. Norbert and uh, city council members. Um, <clears throat> uh, my name is Derek Forward, uh, Dr. Derek L. Forward, president of the uh, Dayton Unit NAACP. I reside at 4215 Breezewood Avenue in a capacity as president of the NAACP in Dayton, Ohio. Uh, I cover m the whole area of Montgomery County, Ohio. Uh, so Oakwood falls within uh, that area of opportunity. Uh, <clears throat> I was first contacted about this uh, report uh, a new while back, um, or, or, or about actual statistics as relates to African Americans being stopped, even before this scathing report even came to fruition. Uh, you know, it's something that has been going on for uh, a number of years that uh, many African Americans have made complaints at our office. Uh, and maybe what we should have done uh, during that point in time is uh, brought that to city council. Uh, I just heard you say that no one has contacted you in your tenure as mayor. Uh, so, uh, so maybe we can make certain that we uh, change that so as we get information from citizens uh, throughout Dayton, Ohio, that, that we'll be more than happy to uh, share those uh, complaints uh, with city council. Um, but as I look at these numbers, I can tell you, like I share with uh, you two today, the mayor and city manager earlier this morning that um, that I share with you two a personal issue that I had up in Cincinnati 
And, um, and I can tell you that racial profiling is real. Uh, racial profiling does occur. And unfortunately, based upon these numbers that, you know, the data uh, that has been collected uh, from information, from my understanding, uh, that uh, this data was given to ABLE from the city of Oakwood. I, now, that is incorrect. Uh, you all can let me know that that's incorrect. But that's from my understanding that's of right. where the data, uh, you know, how they compiled the data. So, so with that being the case, um, and when I look at these numbers, I mean, it's very stunning and staggering to know that, uh, you know, the percentage of African Americans who, who reside inside of this community versus the percentage of stops, uh, you know, is, uh, you know, is quite uh, disturbing, uh, to say the least, uh, as I shared with you two earlier. Uh, but I can tell you the one that really uh, disturbs us the most as, uh, as an organization as a, and as a body of people who reside in uh, the Dayton region, and that is when officers are using basically their discretion uh, to pull people over. Uh, that is the one that's probably the most disturbing. Now, let's just say that they had the, um, the scanners on the back of their cars. And their scanners was constantly, you know, just running different license plates. And if they were to find out that someone was actually, uh, there's a warrant related to that particular registered vehicle or something like that, then uh, something like that could be uh, kind of understood. Uh, but when you have somebody that's sitting on the side of the road that's, uh, that's actually, taking down license plates and then finding out from their standpoint, initiating a traffic stop uh, because of a tailpipe or a bumper or whatever the case may have been. Uh, and to have these kind of numbers for the number of citizens uh, of African-American descent that's coming through the community, uh, it simply just isn't right. Uh, you know, and uh, so there's three things like I share with you all today <clears throat> that we're asking for the city of Oakwood uh, uh, to, uh, to consider. Uh, number one, and you kind of spoke about it inside of your uh, reading there, uh, to increase implicit bias training for the officers and track whether officers are implementing what they learn. Uh, I think that can be uh, done immediately. Uh, we have individuals that just right down the road, your next door neighbors in the city of Kettering. Uh, you know, we dealt with a Confederate flag issue there uh, a few years back and had an opportunity to talk with that um, school board um, superintendent and or the school superintendent and um, and he actually used the individual that we recommended or the company we recommended to do some diversity training you know throughout their district and, I, and that's something that can be easily done uh, inside of the city of Oakwood number two uh, stop the practice of sitting by the side of the road and running the license plates of drivers who are not driving poorly so if I'm driving down far hills I should not be afraid uh, as, as a person of color uh, you know that I'm going to be potentially stopped even though I'm not having any moving violations uh, you know that is you know that's kind of scary our nation is already in turmoil you know our nation is on edge and uh, probably on the collapse of a civil war uh, you know because of a person that's directing us at the, in the highest office of the land so what I'm saying, what I'm saying here is racial profiling is real. Uh, we cannot take it lightly. We cannot, and, and we gotta deal with it at face value and we gotta deal with it head on. So uh, that can be uh, implemented very easily. Officers, uh, we need for you to, if you're gonna conduct a traffic stop, conduct a traffic stop because this person has done something wrong uh, they were speeding through the community because you want to keep your community safe. Uh, there was an accident, so you took care of the accident situation. Uh, they happen to have scanners on the vehicle and seen that this car, whoever's associated with this vehicle, has a warrant for their arrest. But just to randomly stop people who are driving through the community really is not really a, um, uh, you know, to me, a welcoming city. Uh, you know, if I've got to be fearful that I'm going to ride through the city of Oakwood, and, and I have a valid driver's license, and 
I may be stopped because someone is sitting on the side of the road and I have not uh, done any kind of traffic violations. I think that's egregious and, uh, and I think that needs to be stopped effective immediately. Uh, you all have the power uh, to make that happen. Uh, you all oversee the police chief uh, in all of their direct reports. And that's something that you can do very simply. Uh, and then the last thing is uh, put a commission in place. So commission a detailed independent study of current data to get a deeper understanding of the issue. So, uh, so as you stated inside your report, uh, you, you have questions about how they collected data. But at the end of the day, uh, you can commission, this body can commission uh, a study and put together a study uh, to dig deeper, uh, look at the numbers, uh, start uh, Put, put in place uh, a system uh, that you really can track uh, what officers are actually uh, conducting or initiating these stops. You know, put the, you know, a you know, spreadsheet is very easy to do uh, you know, in terms of putting together uh, an Excel spreadsheet. Here's the officer's name. Here's the various stops these officers made uh, throughout the course of the day. I mean, it's, it's very, I mean, an Excel spreadsheet is very user friendly. Um, and uh, I think, it, yeah, I really think that can be done. But I don't think that we should wait on a commission uh, to be put in place, or if, you know, basically independent study to be put in place to take care of the first two issues. Uh, I, you know, I humbly ask that you all consider that. Uh, and uh, you know, for the sake of uh, the city of Oakwood, it's a beautiful city out here. Uh, and in fact, someone just invited me to go to dine somewhere here uh, inside of the city of Oakwood. I told them uh, I'm going to come and dine with them because I've never been. I, I can't even think of the name of the place, but I, I guess it's on the main strip. It's strip probably here. the Oakwood Club, and I'll be the there Oak later Club. tonight. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, the Oakwood Oakwood Club. So I've never dined there before, but but I plan to dine there here very soon. Uh, and uh, but I, when I come here should not be afraid uh, because I'm driving a nice vehicle uh, that I'm African American that I'm going to be pulled over. Uh, you know, I, I should feel comfortable because I have a valid driver's license. Uh, I'm able to drive where I want, wherever I want to drive, and I shouldn't have be fearful that I'm going to get stopped. Mm -hmm. So uh, I just ask that, uh, and, and I'm glad that you all said earlier that you all um, would actually uh, be in a position that you would consider working with the NAACP, uh, you know, to actually uh, look at some uh, enhanced training. I know that you are already do the training already, uh, but, uh, but I thank you for even uh, having the courage to say, well, Derek, uh, yes, we will actually look at doing some enhanced training uh, for our officers, uh, you know, because training never hurts anybody. Uh, we're all in a training and learning mode. And sometimes when you think about the words implicit bias, implicit bias, somebody could be racist and not even know they're racist. Uh, you know, and, and, and that's as true as I'm standing here looking you eyeball to eyeball. Uh, you know, and at the end of the day, there's people who are out there, uh, even African Americans, uh, you know, who, who feel a certain way because of what happened to them. Uh, you know, throughout the course of time, or happened to their ancestors. You know, like I explained to you, the two situations in you know in Cincinnati with myself. Uh, you know, I could, in fact, feel a certain way. Uh, you know, when I'm being pulled over for no reason, it happened to me. You know, so if it's happened, so if it happens to me, and I just quit going to Cincinnati unless I have to drive that way, I you know I even hate going through Cincinnati. So I don't want nobody to hate going coming to the city of Oakwood because it's in the Dayton region and the Dayton region is strong as we proved ourselves through the things that's happened over the, these, you know, over this past summer. Mm -hmm. So I just ask that you all consider uh, those three things. Uh, the number two, you know, the first two, I think that you can implement very easily, very effectively and just make it work on behalf of your citizens, on behalf of the citizens throughout the Dayton region and uh, I, I think that you all can do it. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Ford, for your comments. Um, who else would like to speak? Come down and please uh, uh, state your name and address for the record and welcome. Thanks. Uh, my name is Sam Dorf and I live at 101 Oak Knoll Drive here in lovely oh. Oakwood, Ohio. So uh, when I read this report uh, on first WISO and then I read it in the Dayton Daily News and um, my initial reaction wasn't that, oh wow, this is so awful. It was like, oh yeah, I've kind of realized this for a long time, but I haven't said anything about it. 
and it also made me think that while all of these issues about traffic specifically are really important it's really the tip of the iceberg about the culture and the perception of our town that I have friends that are refuse to come to my house in Oakwood because they're African-American and they are afraid rightfully so driving down the streets of our city they're afraid taking their kids to the park saying hey let's go meet up at Orchard Lee they're afraid they're afraid to bring their kids to a park because they feel that this city is unwelcoming to them and that is the real issue that I am concerned about and so we will address this right we will dig deeper into this data find out more but we still have this lingering problem that people don't feel welcome in this city they don't feel welcome in our schools sometimes right they don't feel welcome in our parks and I am urging the City Council to put together a group of citizens of representatives from NAACP other groups to try and figure out what's going on in the city where this is the perception people have of the city of Oakwood people think oh great schools beautiful streets wonderfully manicured but so many people just don't feel welcome here and that concerns me so I, I'm sure some of my other colleagues and neighbors can uh, echo this but I would love to know what the City Council thinks about this D is diversity in our city and a concern to you do you believe that it's a primary concern for the city of Oakwood to be more diverse to have a more robust and diverse um, group of people that live here that make decisions that teach in our schools and come to our parks um, so I invite you to consider that and happy to help um, push those conversations in any way I can so thank, thank you. you very much for your comments who else would like to uh, speak to this issue or any other issue as well because this is if you could state your name and address the record and welcome. Hi, my name is Myrna Gabby. Can you move the mic down a little bit? Okay. Thank you. My name is Myrna Gabby. I live on 345 Peach Orchard Avenue. Um, I'm just going to echo. I know you asked that we didn't repeat much comments, but I was going to say something similar, that Oakwood does have a reputation, um, and I've had colleagues that have moved out of Oakwood because they were stopped too often. I had colleagues that just wouldn't come to Oakwood because they were stopped too often. And I feel like this is a loss. It's a loss for uh, myself. I don't feel, I feel safer in a diverse community. community. Um, and we know that children of all different backgrounds do better in diverse schools. So um, I hope that we can do something to fix this problem. And I was dismayed that the response is one of defensiveness. And I would um, put this question to you. If that's the response, who would come forward? We all know everybody talks and jokes about how unwelcoming Oakwood is. And so if nobody's coming forward to you, then this strikes me as um, evidence that we have a bigger problem than we might admit to, right? And so um, that's it. Thank well, you. Thank you for your comments. Who else would Who else would like to address council? Again, state your name and address for the record, and welcome. Yeah, I'm Matthew Curry, two six three Ridgewood Avenue. Um, so I've lived in the Dayton area for about fifteen years, about half of that um, here in Oakwood. And during this whole time, I've heard the phrase, which has been alluded to earlier, uh, driving while black in Oakwood. Um, I've heard it from white people and from African Americans. And this report, to me, puts that in context. Um, and quite frankly, it's embarrassing as a resident to see a report like this um, about our community. Um, I think it's important for context for people to understand that uh, Abel was contacted by the Montgomery County Public Defender in 2016, which led to the records request as I understand it. Um, and the concern from the public defender was those who are appearing in Oakwood Muni Municipal Court for traffic violations were overwhelmingly African American. Um, I have had conversations with two African Americans over the past three weeks, both stopped here in Oakwood. 
um, both not cited for anything, not pulled over because they were speeding, not pulled over because they had um, anything wrong with their car, but pulled over for safety reasons, concern about perception in the community, and it's, it really is an issue. And I think we have to be honest with ourselves about this and to figure out a way to uh, have conversations and to address it. Um, you know, I would just end, end by saying that, um, you know, public safety is great, and I support all the efforts um, from our public safety officials to keep our community safe. Um, but I find it troubling when um, there are these discretionary stops that happen, um, when nearly 15%, um, there's a 15% increase in African Americans who are given citations because of those discretionary stops. Um, we should not be stopping individuals unless we have probable cause or if there's a moving violation or equipment violation. Um, anything else doesn't seem to me to be protecting the public safety. Um, and to me, as was stated earlier, that is um, one of the issues um, that I think is important to, to get to. Thank you. Okay, thank you for your comments. <laughs> Who else would like to address council on this matter or any other matter? No one else wants to talk? Okay. No, no. <laughs> what, 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 our, what our plans are is to uh, uh, work with Dr. Hurley and Mr. Ellis on uh, understanding the data in more detail as well as their methodology as, and then also to have uh, an additional status report that we will give to the community and I believe 60 days is probably uh, the right amount of time. We could pot potentially do it in 30, but we're also uh, taking a look at uh, some of these, uh, some of our records internally as well. So that process is ongoing, and it started essentially on uh, October 2nd, uh, the day after we met with uh, the authors of the report. So I would expect that you'll be hearing more from us uh, very shortly. Any other comments from members of council? No. All right, thank you. Um, again, last chance for speakers. Okay, um, we'll now go to uh, legislation, uh, and Vice Mayor Byington has a first reading of an ordinance. Uh, yes, Your Honor, this is an ordinance to amend uh, section uh, one of the 2009. Uh, 19 original appropriation ordinance uh, number 4870 supplemental appropriation ordinance number 4887 and the supplemental appropriation ordinance number 4891 to provide for the appropriations of one an additional amount of four hundred and twenty two thousand one hundred and thirty seven dollars to be expended from the police pension fund to pay off the Ohio police and fire pension liability and two an amount of $422,000 to be transferred from the general fund to the police pension fund, and an additional amount of $32,000 to be expended from the equipment replacement fund to purchase a vehicle for the director of engineering and public works, and four, an amount of $32,000 to be transferred from the general fund to the equipment replacement fund uh, for the city of Oakwood, state of Ohio, during the fiscal year ending December 31st, 2019. Uh, this is the first reading of a supplemental appropriation ordinance that will allow the city to make two expenditures not already included in the 2019 budget. One is the early payoff of a liability owed to the state of Ohio, and the other is the purchase of a vehicle for the use by the Director of Engineering and Public Works. Uh, the Ohio Police and Fire Pension Fund, or the OPFP, was uh, created by the Ohio General Assembly in 1965 to replace hundreds uh, of individual local police and fire pension plans. At the time, many of the cities, including Oakwood, had pension liabilities on paper exceeding the assets needed to pay future retiree benefits. Uh, in other words, once the state assumed control of local pension plans, many local governments owed money to the state. These liabilities were placed on a 65-year payment schedule with payments beginning in 1970 and continuing through 2035. The current payoff figure for Oakwood's remaining liability is $422,137, which can, uh, continues to incur interest at an average rate of 4.25%. 
due to the difference between that interest rate and the amount generated by city investments, uh, council has determined that it costs the city more to carry this debt and paying off this liability early is the most prudent use of city resources. By paying off the liability now, the city will save approximately $175,000 in interest uh, expenses that would otherwise accrue between now and 2035. It should be noted that uh, 0 0.3 mil of the city's inside millage property tax revenues, which amount to approximately $96,000 annually, have been dedicated to servicing this liability. Once the liability is paid off, the Montgomery County Budget Commission has approved the reallocation of that money to the city's general fund going forward. The other expenditure is for the vehicle uh, for the Director of Engineering and Public Works. The city has not employed a full-time director in that department since the previous director resigned in the fall of 2014. Those d duties have been assumed by the city manager in the interim, but he will uh, hire a full-time director of engineering and public works later this year. The city no longer has a uh, vehicle for use by that person in that position and needs to acquire one. In total, this supplemental appropriation will authorize the transfer of 454000 from the city's general fund, with 422000 of that going to the police punt pension fund and 32000 going to the equipment replacement fund in order to pay for these expenditures. Uh, the motion I make, uh, th since this is a first reading, I will make no motion at this time and we will address it again in November. Thank you, Vice Mayor Byington. Uh, it's now time for our staff report from uh, Leisure Services Department and Carol Collins will give that to, to us. Welcome, Carol. Thank you. Mayor Duncan, members of council, city manager Klopsch, it's a pleasure to be here tonight to give a report for the Leisure Services Department. I'd also like to thank my staff for doing an outstanding job on all the programming and um, uh, community events that we have and things that we've had in the past as well as in the future. First of all, we'll start off with Gardner Pool Memberships this year, we had 475 family memberships, 94 single memberships, 96 senior memberships. Family memberships were up by 26, single memberships were down by 34, and seniors were up by 12 from the 2018. Ooh, that was cool. <laughs> so summer at the pool we had 20,764 visits in 2019 as compared to 21,494 in 19 in 2018 gate revenue in 19 was $8,360 as compared to 7,519 concession stands were um, almost the same as in 2019 and 2018 at approximately $19,000. Swim lessons, we had 198 participants, up by 20 from 2018. Swim team had 221 participants, and this year we won the Miami Valley um, swim team um, meet. Um, water aerobics had 39 participants, and we had a very good pool season. It didn't start off the greatest, but it ended with warm weather, and um, we feel that it was just a great pool season. Revenue for the 2019 pool season was $146,306 as compared to $141,624 in 2018. Kind of to end the pool season was the 11th annual dog splash. We had 49 dogs that came and swam at Gardner Pool on Sunday, September the 8th from 1 to 3. I think you'll see by the pictures that they all had a ball. We had eight vendors that participated in this popular ending to the pool season. This Sunday, we will have Scarecrow Row and it will be held on Schaefer Boulevard. Um, we're very excited about having this annual community event and having lots of participants. Applications um, and sign up for Scarecrow Row um, are now being taken and the deadline is this Thursday at nine o'clock. 
Along with that is the Family Fall Festival, and that will be held from 2 to 5 at Schaefer Park. Um, we have hay rides that will go down Scarecrow Row. There's a costume parade, entertainment, a diaper derby, lots of family pictures, and much, much more. We encourage everybody to come to this great community event. Kind of switching gears, we're going to talk about the Johnny Appleseed Street Tree Planting Program for 2019. Um, this project began in 1976 in an effort to support the City of Oakwood's commitment to urban forestry and to the environment. To date, this program has been responsible for planting over 3,000 trees. Um, as you can see, the highlights below um, talk about how great this program is. This year, we will offer five varieties of trees. They'll be one and three quarter inches in diameter. Um, the most needy areas in the community will be given first priority, although I would say in years past everybody's been able to purchase um, a street tree if they're interested. One tree will be allocated at a 50% discount for each approved property sites. Um, I do have an application and a brochure. The prices for the trees range from $138 to $150 for the 50% discount. The trees will be guaranteed for one growing season by the nursery. This year, the varieties that we're offering is the Green Spire Little Leaf Linden. This is a great street tree with mature height of 60 to 70 feet at maturity. Another one is the Ivory Silk Japanese Lilac. Um, one of the great characteristics of this tree is that it has creamy white flowers in June. It's one of the only street trees that um, has the blooms um, in the later part of the spring into summer. And of course we can't forget the Eastern Red Oak. Um, we've offered that for a number of years, but it continues to be a very popular tree. And one of the trees that we've used in the business district is the Princeton American Elm. Um, again, it's one tree that is very highly recommended for a street tree. And we've planted a number of these trees um, in the city right away over the last several years. And then the last one we're offering for the fall color is the fall Fiesta Sugar Maple. And, um, you know, again, that's a very popular tree. We're very glad to have this program to be able to offer trees. So um, the people that have had a tree taken down in the last year have received brochures and applications in the hopes that they will replace a tree that was removed. Another special event was the Smith Gardens 45th anniversary. Um, the special part of this is that 45 years ago, Smith Gardens was given to the city of Oakwood by the Carlton W. Smith family. Um, we're very happy and pleased that we've been able to maintain Smith Gardens for the visitors and for the community and for those um, beyond the Oakwood community. But if part of the 45th anniversary events, we had portraits in the gardens. Uh, we had um, the portraits in September and October. We just had one this past weekend and um, it was just a very popular event for us and we're happy that we were able to provide this. Well, one of the blanket concerts, the last blanket concert of the season was the Puzzle of Light and Michael Bashaw was one that did the musical sculpture that you'll see um, in one of the pictures but that was held on August the 4th and we had a great crowd that evening and we were just very happy to be able to present this. Then the last event for the year is the Holiday Festival of Lights auction, um, which will be held on Friday, November the 15th. We've never done this before, but we're very happy um, and excited about this project. Um, businesses and individuals will donate decorated themed tr holiday trees to be auctioned off, with all proceeds going towards the maintenance and care of Smith Gardens. Here's just a few pictures of the gardens. This is in the spring. 
of 2019. And as you can see, you know, the entranceway to um, the gardens was spectacular. And you can also see the pavers that we've added throughout the years. And that was another fundraiser for Smith Gardens. And then this is a picture of the musical sculpture that Michael Bashaw did. And here's a picture of Michael and his group, The Puzzle of Light. And then that blanket concert, people from the audience were able to come and participate in a couple of songs and they were able to play the chimes that were um, in the musical sculpture. Then to finish off the season, we have um, the pumpkin carving at the Oakwa Community Center on Saturday, October the 19th. And then we have the mother's son dance on Saturday, November the 9th from 7.30 to 9. Tickets are now available at the Oakwood Community Center for this popular event. Then we have a candy cane hunt that's open to the public in Schaefer Park on Saturday, December the 7th. And then we have the breakfast with Santa at the OCC on Saturday, December the 7th from 9 to 11.30 at the OCC. And the final event of the season is the lighting up of Oakwood and the Holiday of Lights on Sunday, December the 8th. And um, the festivities in the park at Schaefer Park, we promise will be um, a lot of fun and a great sharing for the holiday season and the um, expectation of winter. And with that, um, happy fall. I'm looking forward to the holiday season. And if you have any questions, I'd be more than happy to answer them. And thank you. Any questions for Carol? Uh, you had mentioned that the dog classes were eight vendors. Vendors for what? Um, we had um, the Humane Society was there. Oh, so Wash Your Dog was there. Um, we had rescue groups that were there. Um, but it was, um, it was a great event. I think Norbert could contest, you know, to that. So, yeah. If if Norb's dog went in there, there wouldn't be any water left in the pool. <laughs> yeah. So that's my prompt to talk about polar bear. So, for those who don't know, I have a it was a rescue, and he's a great Pyrenees lab mix. And when my family found him at a, a vet vet office there in Kettering, he weighed 85 pounds, and his skeleton was full size. And he uh, tipped out about 163 uh, about six <laughs> months ago after the winter. He beefed up last winter. And the vet said, you know, probably in the 140s is his, his fighting weight, so to speak, his better weight. So he's down to about 154. But uh, we took him to the dog splash and um, he kind of wanted to see if he could actually swim. And he could. He, you know, he got a little bit... <laughs> uneasy about it but took him down the ramp and got him where he was fully and he just I mean you can imagine the front legs going but yeah it was a, an absolute blast and that's a great uh, end of season event for the pool any other questions for Carol thank you and your department again for all their uh -huh. services for our great city we appreciate you very much sure. You're and, and what a great lead in to our city manager's report <laughs> thank you your honor uh, just a few quick things the uh, you know, each year when I hear about the Johnny Appleseed program, I think about our sidewalk curb and driveway apron program. And why do I think about that? Because um, many, many years ago, both program, the sidewalk curb and apron was in place even before the Johnny Appleseed. But, you know, as you, you're aware, that's a, a recurring, you know, every four years we cover roughly 25% of the area of the city. And because we do that without exception on a regular rotating basis, why we continuously keep up our, our sidewalks in particular, but also the roadway curbing and the driveway apron. So anywhere you go in Oakwood, um, you're going to find, you know, very well-maintained uh, concrete structures, and that's important. Well, likewise with the Johnny Appleseed program, because we do this every year, uh, we are replenishing our tree stock. But just like clockwork, because every year, and, you know, Carol has all the numbers on this, but year after year after year, um, a number of our citizens, you know, pitch in 50% of the cost and and uh, put it, plant a new tree. And 
my family this year is doing it. We had it. We lost a crimson maple, and um, to a disease. It was I'm guessing 25, 20, 25 years old probably, and uh, I think we're going to put a Prince uh, Princeton Elm in. So um, anyway, it's a great great program, and my thanks to Carol for for that that and everything that the uh, her department uh, does. A couple other quick things. Uh, next Monday starts the, believe it or not, the leaf collection season, and uh, there's already a number of folks putting leaves out in the out in the street. Information about that is posted on our website, and it's in the last uh, city newsletter that was just sent out. And uh, just as a reminder, we ask folks to, ideally, just a few days before the pickup, um, the scheduled pickup, is to you know break the leaves right out into the gutter, and they will come by very quickly and, and pick them up. Um, so that goes for a 10-week period. We'll cover each neighborhood um, on a two-week cycle. Uh, also next week, uh, weather permitting, we'll be completing the, the final uh, portion of our street project. This is the asphalt rejuvenation. It's a surface treatment uh, that's put on the pavement that was resurfaced last year. So the, the five different streets that were repaved last year will get a uh, rejuvenation treatment it, it extends the life of the pavement um, we'll, we'll pu put information about that with a map on our website as well but each of the property owners on all the affected streets received a postcard notification last week it's a one-day project basically to put an oil down and then a light sand so that it, the road can be driven on uh, very quickly uh, after the application and then uh, in, two or three days later the contractor sweeps up the remaining you know small amount of sand and then the, the project is completed and then uh, I guess my final comment is the regarding the 2020 budget as you know we had a meeting last month uh, the first of a series of three with our budget committee citizen budget committee um, and our second meeting is next Tuesday on October 15th and we'll be presenting uh, but last month we presented the capital plan for next year and next week we'll uh, provide the complete line item budget so that we can show um, you know there are revenues and expenses and in, in all, all the different funds of the city so um, and then the final meeting takes place in late November with then the budget being presented to you at the December council meeting so that's all I have any uh, questions or comments for our city manager Hearing none, then uh, be time for council comments and council member Epley. You know, I usually don't make too many comments, but um, tomorrow is my daughter's 14th birthday. <laughs> wow. And I know many of you here in the audience, well, one in the audience knows her from Rotary as well as a few of the council members. Mm -hmm. And so if it's here tomorrow, wish her a 14th birthday. We will be most certain to do that. <laughs> council member Hilton. Uh, no comments, Your Honor. Vice Mayor Byington comments your honor thank you uh, again just a reminder of the holiday festival this Sunday um, scarecrow row um, I we've been very busy here at the city dealing with uh, this issue and uh, that I talked about in my status report and one thing that I want to personally congratulate is our city manager our city law director and our director of public safety uh, they have, as we don't know how to do it any other way than to be transparent. And we have already uh, reached out to the authors of the report uh, requesting additional information and trying to understand how they took the data that we gave them and how they evaluated it. And we want to understand their methodologies. And uh, we're looking forward to that dialogue. And. Uh, I look forward to you know updating the citizens. We're also going through our records. Uh, I know that during the course of this, I received a phone call from um, Judge Quinn, who also indicated that she has never seen in her six years on the bench of any uh, instance of explicit bias, nor has the public defender ever uh, said that he had seen any instances of, of that. Uh, that said, we're still going to look at our training, we're going to look at our policies, we're going to look at our procedures, and we're going to follow the facts. Um, one thing that uh, Judge Quinn told me that, that our public safety officers, 20% uh, of whom I don't think were even here at the city back in 2016, are, are the finest group of public safety officers we have ever had. 
And part of that is, I think, due to Chief, uh, Chief Hill and, and our two captains leadership. And we have the ability to recruit the best of the best from other departments across the area. And the fact that uh, we're all cross-trained in all three disciplines, police, fire, and EMS, you know, requires us to maybe have a higher caliber of, of public safety officers than you might expect in other jurisdictions. But we will not reduce our commitment to uh, traffic enforcement in Oakwood. Uh, just dealing with this issue uh, in, the, in the last, uh, well, it's really since the last five days, uh, two anecdotal instance, uh, in incidences I heard was we had a traffic stop on 48, uh, south south of the high school a uh, person was going 46 in a 35 mile zone and uh, smoking marijuana and then just uh, yesterday we had one going 56 in a 35 at Far Hills and Shantz smoking marijuana now the fact of the matter is is that we have children that cross at Far Hills and Shantz we have children uh, crossing at Patterson we have children crossing here at Park we have children crossing in front of the high school and in front of our library and that factor alone makes the fact that our traffic enforcement patterns have to be different than city of Kettering and so to try to compare us to the city of Kettering under some sort of statistical metrics in my mind is apples and oranges, but I'm going to withhold judgment until I see all the data that, that the uh, researchers have prepared. So I also want you, Chief, to let all of our public safety officers know, and I think there's 23 of them currently, uh, that uh, we, su we support their efforts to keep our community safe, and we know that if there's any improvements that need to be made, you will be the one that implements it, and they will gladly uh, follow your direction. So, uh, again, I appreciate all of your efforts as well as, as, as you guys as well. So we look forward to, to working with these folks uh, on, on this issue, and we will, we will deal with it. Yes, I'm sorry. I, can you make me put my glasses on? Ah, and I also want to, on behalf of the city, uh, give condolences to Councilmember Hilton, whose mother passed away this week. And uh, I know they're, you're having a celebration service on Saturday, and, and I plan to attend, and as well as I think other members of council. So we, we uh, are uh, feeling for you and praying for you and your loss, and as well as your father and brother. So um, sorry about forgetting that, but I apologize. Mm -hmm. And uh, with that, uh, our meeting f uh, it will be adjourned, and our next meeting will be on uh, Monday, November 4, the day before Election Day. We're adjourned.